What is up my fish tank guys and girls? So recently I purchased this API phosphate test kit. Now I know it's not the best test kit on the market, but I thought it would at least give me a general idea, you know, in terms of how high or low my phosphate levels are in my aquariums. However, little did I know that this little box here and its contents were going to give me a massive headache. So I'm going to do a separate video all about phosphates, what they are, where they come from, and how to get rid of them. But in summary, phosphates are chemical compounds that are found in pretty much every aquarium. They come from fish waste, fish food, they can come from the sand, they can come from your rock work, and a lot of people unknowingly introduce them into their aquarium when they use untreated water like tap water. Now the problem with phosphates are, you know, if you have them in too high of a level in your aquarium, they encourage the growth of nuisance algae like hair algae and brown algae and all the nasty stuff that we don't like to see in our aquariums. In addition, they can also stunt the growth of corals, so phosphates are kind of a double whammy. Now you can have low levels of phosphate, but higher levels of phosphate will cause problems, especially over time. It doesn't impact fish at all, so your fish will look fine, but your corals will actually be suffering. So because this Fluval Evo Aquarium is a little bit smaller, I was hoping to see where my phosphate levels are because they can probably fluctuate pretty quickly given the smaller volume of size with the Fluval Evo. So I figured this would be the perfect tank to do my first test with my brand new API phosphate test kit. So let's break it out and let's see where our phosphate levels are at in this guy. Okay, so based on my eyesight, it looks like my phosphate level is around 2.0 parts per million, which is a lot higher than I'd like it to be. I'd like it to be closer to zero. So instead of immediately going to a chemical and trying to eliminate the phosphates in my tank, the first thing I'm going to do is check for if I have a source of phosphates, which would be by checking my source water. For some people, this is tap water. For me, it's RODI. Now, in addition to testing the RODI water, I'm going to test my salt water mixture because there are some salts that apparently introduce some phosphates into your water um, just based on whatever is in the salt mixture. So I want to make sure that that's not happening in my case. So I'm going to do another uh, menial task aquarium montage here testing both my RODI water and my salt water mixture and then I'm going to show you guys the results and we'll talk about it in a second. Okay guys, so what those results tell me is that something is up here. I had a 2.0 parts per million reading around there for my Fluval Evo uh, aquarium, for my saltwater mix, and also for my RODI water. So the natural inclination is to think something's up with the RODI. So I reached out to the manufacturer. He said, sure enough, it should filter out phosphates, especially if you're getting a zero TDS meter reading, which I was on output. So I decided, okay, I'm gonna do a few more tests, which I'm not gonna show you. I'm not gonna take you guys through um, the menial tank 
uh, menial aquarium task montage videos again, maybe until a future video. But um, I tested a few variations of bottled water that were purified via RO. Now I know those might not all filter out phosphates, but maybe there'd be some discrepancy there so I could see a difference in the result. And sure enough, the result was the same across the board. So what does that tell you? It tells me this guy here is the problem. API, my phosphate test kit. Now, instead of denounce API, throw this away, burn it in the streets, uh, send them a nasty gram, I simply reached out to the company. I told them what was going on, and they very graciously said, hey, what's your address? We're going to send you a replacement test kit because something sounds fishy. And sometimes we have issues with the reagents that are in these test kits that actually give you the reading. So maybe it was just a bad batch or something was wrong. So that being said, I think the moral of the story here is if you have the opportunity to test a known water source where your readings should be zero, and if you have another water source where you believe your readings should be higher, you should do that initially when you get a test kit to make sure that it's giving you both ends of the spectrum in terms of results because that way you won't end up like me where I was kind of bashing my head against the wall wondering like why are my phosphates high I can't figure this out and then I was going to test my other sources and they were high too and I was just getting very confused so um, I think that that is going to be a good best practice that I will try to employ moving forward when it comes to test kits. So once again, I am the Fish Tank Guy. Thank you so much for checking out my channel and checking out this video. You may have noticed that I did a few different things and new things within this video. Let me know in the comment section below if you liked the changes or you didn't like the changes. Um, yeah, just kind of experimenting with the channel, hoping to grow it a little bit more in the future. So uh, thank you guys so much for subscribing, for following me on social media, and for commenting on the videos. I really appreciate it. And and, um, you know, do your best out there with this hobby. Sometimes it can be really frustrating and infuriating and uh, hard to wrap your head around. Uh, but uh, we'll all make it through, I promise you. And we'll all have nice and successful and clean tanks all the time, 24-7, 365, right? I don't know. All right. Anyway, until a future Fish Tank Guy video, I will see you guys soon.